So if I speak like this, is it loud enough for the... Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, so thank you uh, all for coming. Uh, welcome to the uh, Software Defined Radios developer, Developers Room. Um, this is the first year, the first installment of this track, and I hope there'll be many more. Um, but because it's the first one, we're very, very excited about this. Um, and also, I'm pretty happy that we actually were able to put it together and that we've got a pretty good um, agenda. So, a um, couple of things I'd like to say before we actually get started. Um, <clears throat> I mean, you probably all know what this is about, but... Um, a minute. I'm just gonna full screen this. Um, you probably know what all of this is about. Software Defined Radio is like a term that's been a, around for a while. I, I, th I think it kind of came out of academia and it sort of was absorbed by the hacker community and also the industry. Um, so I just, I just want to say this on tape right now that, that we have a reference for what, what we're talking about. So when we're talking about software-defined radio, we're talking about the ability to, be, to, be, to have devices which we can program, which we can run our own code on, which then do signal processing, do radio, all these kinds of stuff. So I've heard people say all kinds of things about software-defined radio on the medias, for example. Um, like one misconception was that it's sort of confined to digital communication, and that's, that's not true. You can do analog communication with software-defined radio. <coughs> Excuse me. But there's always the software, so we, we, can, we, can, uh, we can hack and we can code ourselves, and that's what makes this so interesting. Because the, like, the ability to run our own code on affordable devices, um, you know, such as these, gives us, you know, opens new doors. It takes away all the, the voodoo. Well, it doesn't really take away the voodoo, but it sort of <laughs> makes it whole, whole, more, exposed. Almost, yeah, exposed it is. And we can, we can do whatever we want now. So, like, anyone could buy cheap stuff um, and start uh, transmitting, receiving, um, and, yeah, you know, reverse engineer protocols or... <laughs> We, we have people that do radio astronomy, we have people that are doing uh, radar processing, because these are all things that you can do with a software-defined radio receiver and transmitter. Um, yeah, and there's a couple of very, really interesting uh, software projects and also very interesting free software projects around, um, which make this like very much a suitable topic for FOSDEM, I believe. Oh, hey. Do come in, do come in. <laughs> Okay, um, this is, uh, I think, a complete list of the actual projects that uh, will be here representing today. So GNU Radio, um, I guess that's uh, pretty well known. Um, I guess uh, it's fair to say that this is the biggest project out of these. Although Osmocom kind of is a special, special uh, has its own special status here. We have people talking about Iris, LibLTE is a smaller one. As I said, Osmocom is more of a a mix of projects, I guess, but we'll have people from all of these projects um, talking about them themselves, so I won't go into details here, but I'm really happy that we have this mix of projects, because when we started putting together a speaker list, it, it looked for, for a couple of weeks that we'll be, we'd, we'd, we would be very GNU Radio heavy, and we really didn't want that. Um, I mean, I obviously like GNU Radio, I, I come from the project myself, but the whole point of FOSDEM is to network and to you know share ideas, and you know if we were we have our own GNU Radio conference, like we don't need another one. And um, so I'm really happy that we have this mix of projects, and hopefully we can sort of you know bang our heads together and come up with new ideas uh, today. That'd be really great. So um, first of all, something about us. Um, the people who run this, uh, um, this dev room today, so Phil, is over here, is our embedded guy, and Phil deserves some special praise because he actually came up with the idea and the initiative to start this track. Um, so thanks to, uh, thanks to Phil. And then myself, I'm, um, I'm from the GNU Radio community. Uh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> and Sylvain is over there. Like, he's from Osmocom. Um, so yeah, we have a mix of people actually getting this uh, whole schedule together today. That was pretty good. And if you have any questions, you know, about, I don't know, whatever, project collaboration ideas, just talk to one of us and we'll be able to either help you or to, to uh, point you to the right people. Um, are you, oh no. Yeah, just, just go ahead. <laughs> Don't worry about me. 
I'm just doing the introductions. <coughs> okay, finally, um, a quick word about the schedule. First of all, um, I do plan on sticking to the schedule throughout the day because, I mean, you all know that we like to sort of um, switch tracks, uh, look at specific uh, um, presentations and talks. So, obviously, I'd like to remind the speakers to stay within their slots. But um, like, if if someone is finished early, then we'll just have a break, and then we'll use the time for everyone to, you know, leave, so we can um, do our Q and A in peace and quiet, um, all of that. So this is sort of a um, organizational thing I'd like to put out of there. But I just wanted, I just wanted to, um, you know present the schedule very briefly before we actually start. As I said before, I'm very happy that we have a mix of people from different projects here. Um, so we have people from GNU Radio, IRIS, uh, LibLTE, Osmocom, <laughs> and um, people from academia, people from industry. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm like, I, personally it makes me very happy to see a couple of people who are actually students at uh, uh, the place where I worked before, at the KIT in Karlsruhe. It's very nice. Um, yeah, uh, I think this is a really great schedule, and I'm like I'm also very proud that we were able to put this schedule together before the actual deadline. So like, like I was a bit afraid that this would be because it's because it's new that it would be uh, you know people wouldn't know what to expect and people didn't want to sign up, but no problem. Like we got it filled very quickly, and um, we have this closing session, and it kind of. Like I have this, uh, this I, I don't know if I'm rightfully afraid, but I, like this isn't supposed to be something uh, of a of a time filling thing, right? I think I consider this like really important because we deliberately reserved some time. Go ahead, grab a seat. We deliberately reserved some time to uh, not do talks, right? This is done on purpose. Like even if Marconi and Hertz had risen from the grave and asked me to get this slot for a joint presentation on radio artists, I said, no, I'm sorry guys, like this is really uh, interesting. Like we're gonna have some demos. Um, we're gonna be able to use this room to sort of, I don't know, build up maybe some kind of transceivers or whatever. Um, Paul has something like he will be showing. I'm really excited about that. So this is not, not a, like, this is, we're not filling any time here, like, and this is going to be something where a lot of exciting projects will be also demonstrated, but there will not be a video, um, I guess, because it kind of doesn't really make sense if people are sort of working on different ends of this room. But I'd really like to invite you to stay and stick around, even if you're new to the whole field, like, just have a look what people are working on. So, I mean, the hacker rooms are kind of available for this as well, but I'd, like, I want this place to be a dedicated space for that kind of project at the end of this day. I don't know, are there any questions about the uh, general agenda? I, I mean, I doubt it, but if there are any, like, this would be the right time to ask them. How do we eat? How do you eat? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, well, I mean, this is like a common uh, thing, like, there's rarely a, a lunch time. I mean, I guess you'll just have to pick one of these, like... <laughs> uh, Basically, the instructions from the Plasm guys are is don't schedule a dedicated yeah. break because if everyone scheduled lunch at the same time, the food trucks wouldn't be able to serve us all at once. So yeah, but also if we have ten they tracks, to serve <laughs> yeah, they're difficult. To, yeah, it, it's positive. Yeah. <laughs> but it also allows us to have more talks as well. So. And if you get out, you're sure to get in, or will you be left out? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's another problem. That's another problem, and that's something we can't do anything about it. If the room's full, it's full. Like, sorry about that, but um, like if you were smart, you brought some lunch with you, <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or a friend. One yeah. of us could probably run errands if people need to stay. Yeah, there's a fire escape. Like maybe someone can bring stuff in through the window. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so sorry about that, but um, if, you, if it's full, it's full, and if you're hungry, then you just have to go and get something. Okay, um, because, because of the short delay, um, we're actually right on time for Tom, and I'd like to give a very brief introduction, although you're probably going to introduce yourself. So I'm very happy that Tom's here, because he's the um, actual lead, leader of the GNU Radio project, and um, will be telling us about GNU Radio. Do you want this? 
Uh, yes. Okay. So and let me switch over to. Right. Uh, I, just, I just need to.